StarCast 5, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, gearing up to be a huge event you don't want to miss. Amazing stage shows and live wrestling with shows from Black Label Pro, GCW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and of course, Ric Flair's Last Match, which has an amazing lineup of talent from all over the wrestling landscape. Headlined by Ric Flair's Last Match, and you can follow the story leading up to the match over at Ric Flair's Last Match. Com. We've got new episodes Mondays at 6.05 Eastern. For tickets and more information, go to StarCast.com. It was just a match. And speaking of, we had uh, Roman Reigns and the Usos versus Riddle and the Street Profits. And they went 20 minutes with multiple commercial breaks. And the last few minutes were very good, but, I mean, most of the 19 minutes was... Just taking turns, getting heat on the baby faces one at a time. Get the heat, get the heat, get the heat, hot tag. Get the heat, get the heat, get the heat, hot tag. Basics, basics of it was it was about the match itself was mostly about the Usos beating down on the baby faces. Then when Roman would come in, it would be like a big deal. You know, Roman wrestling. Uh, you know, I mean, they didn't he didn't tag until the seven minute mark, and they portrayed it like he was supposed to get the big pop, and he did. You know, he definitely has that aura of by by not being in the ring as much. He definitely has that special aura, and um, you know, he busted up uh, Montez. Um, I guess they they said it was during the spot where uh, Montez got thrown in the turnbuckle, and they thought Montez might have a broken nose. And immediately, to their credit, they um, said that you know that may that may play a big part in this tag team match because. If Montez has a broken nose, um, he may not be 100% in that match, and the Usos may win. So they, the accident of what happened, you know, instead of ignoring it, they, um, the announcers used it as strategy to build the match at SummerSlam. So Riddle finally got the big hot tag, and he runs wild, gave Roman Reigns a draping DDT, sets up for the RKO, but Roman shoves him off, spears him, pins him in the middle of the ring. So Roman Reigns gets the win there, and as he's leaving, Seth Rollins passes him, and he hits the ring, he goes after Riddle, and gives him a curb stomp in the ring, takes him outside, sets up the steel steps, gives him another stomp on the steel steps, and that was the angle to set up their match at the pay-per-view. And really, at the end of the day, I mean, the show was basic. It was angles to set up SummerSlam. There was nothing stupid on the show. It was just a pretty run-of-the-mill, long, three-hour pro wrestling show that had its good moments and its average moments. And that I mean, was it, really. I mean, I mean, the, the you know, the... the idea that there was going to be something special at msg which you would think um you know the right thing was the right thing was special um but the rest of the show was just a raw show it was fine um the, you know basic by the book building of the the matches uh you know i mean um the show on paper you know as far as the SummerSlam show itself goes um, you know, between like Seth and, and uh, Riddle, you know, we've had very good matches at the house shows and probably on a pay-per-view should do great. Usos and Street Profits, uh, you know, coming off one of the better tag matches in WWE in years. So, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, and, and obviously a last man standing match with um, Reigns and, and uh, Lesnar, at least in the way you would envision that match, the two top guys and WWE last man standing matches are generally really good so it it feels like um you know and they push logan paul miz that's your celebrity match um it feels like a pretty solid show um feels like it's you know the matches will be good uh to to great you know most of them becky and um you know the becky and um and uh bianca Belair singles match you know, they've been holding that off for a long time. Ronda and Liv is interesting because, you know, obviously from the way that that thing has been built up, they don't want, you know, Liv is going to get cheered, you know, and I, and everyone knows that, and that's fine. And, you know, Liv's a baby face, she should. Um, but I think that the way they're building it up, they really don't want Ronda to be booed. And uh, it'll be interesting. I mean, uh, what happens? They've kept them, um, you know, for the most part, like, like on SmackDown, they put them backstage. So you didn't have the thing to where people would boo Ronda or not. Um, they did do 
a tryout match uh, in Utica and um, what was the other city that they were in? Bridgeport, Connecticut this weekend, live in um, Rhonda. And, and did, did uh, you know, Natalia and Shane had just interfered so that you had no finish and set up a tag match later. And I know that in, I don't know what, what, about Utica, but I did get some notes from Bridgeport. In that city, they did, you know, they didn't boo Rhonda at all. You know, it was like it was it was short, but, um, you know, they cheered both of them and then they had the, the, the quick thing. So not a long time, but they're so so that's I mean, I guess the interesting thing as far as if there's like a thing in, in the senses, how, you know, the curiosity reactions is Ronda Rousey and Logan Paul. Um, um, not that like, again, with Ronda Rousey, I think that there's a sort of an exp expectation that some people will probably boo her, but they don't want it to be overwhelming. And then with Logan Paul, um, obviously they want him to be cheered and, um, you know, that's whatever, um, uh, you know, and hopefully um, his in ring, um, you know, it's 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 very different in a singles match than a tag. But he does have a natural aptitude towards this. I mean, when he did his first match, it's it is one of those guys where, you know, first first match he he did really really well. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.